Fed confirmed buyback of XRP in amount of $37,500. According to a post on Ripple's website with comments from key executives, the company predicts that the incoming Biden administration will likely refocus on regulation and enforcement in the cryptocurrency field. Welcome to the Finance Up channel. If you liked this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Do you think the analysts are right about XRP? Write the answers in the comments. Giving away 500 XRP at the end of the week. One random subscriber will receive XRP coins. Take a look at the instructions in the comments section. All you need to do is write the word XRP, watch the video to the end, to like and subscribe. After the release of inflation statistics, speculators began to bet again on a half percent increase in the Fed rate at a meeting in March and six increases before the end of the year. But the real intrigue lies not even in this, but in the February contract for the federal funds rate, which jumped to 13 basis points the day before. In other words, the market assumes that the Federal Reserve will tighten monetary policy by 5 basis points compared to the effective federal funds rate, which currently stands at 0.08%. And what is the intrigue here? It's very simple. The fact is that the February contract expires on February 28th, that is, more than two weeks before the meeting of the Open Market Operations Committee, which, we recall, is scheduled for March 16th. That is, it means that someone is preparing for an unscheduled rate hike at an unscheduled meeting. A 13 basis point increase in the February contract means that there is now a 30% chance of an emergency rate hike. Does such a scenario seem impossible? According to the so-called Fed Watcher, a specialist who examines in detail all the actions of the Fed, SGH macro strategist Tim Dye, he would not be surprised by an intermediate movement, for example, on Friday or Monday. Although this is an insanely aggressive solution, it has a certain chance of implementation. What is even more curious is the fact that the Fed is still buying bonds as part of an ongoing quantitative easing program. And although it is expected to end in March, it is still in effect now. In other words, we may soon face a monetary paradox, the Fed raising rates at a time when the same Fed is still easing monetary policy through quantitative easing. Well, the biggest paradox is that the Federal Reserve wants to aggressively fight inflation by raising rates, while it claims that the real reason for the price increase is interruptions in supply chains and a shortage of supply, all because of the pandemic, that is, it will try to influence the factors that the Fed does not control in any way. The US inflation data released the day before did not come as a big surprise, but still turned out to be slightly higher than expected, the indicator rose to 7.5%. Yes, these are the highest values since 1982, but they are not unexpected. By the way, the rating of US President Joe Biden is moving diametrically opposite to inflation, that is, it is falling rapidly. Perhaps against this background, the Fed leadership is under pressure to do something to slow the growth of consumer prices. By the way, Earlier we suggested that inflation would slow down by itself due to the effect of a high base in 2021. However, the time has not yet come for this. The fact is that inflation began to accelerate that year only closer to summer, and in January the consumer price index was still relatively low. So the effect of a high base will make itself felt only, perhaps, in late autumn and then the Fed and the President will be able to announce their alleged successes in the fight against rising prices. The US central bank is printing dollars non-stop in 2020, using the COVID-19 crisis and the consequences of the global lockdown as an excuse. The Fed has recently acquired so many assets that it has become the largest investor on the planet. What will such a strategy lead to? To the question, who is the largest investor in the world? Many will probably answer someone like Rockefeller or Rothschild. Maybe someone more financially savvy will name several large investment funds. The correct answer is none of the above. According to Bloomberg, America's Federal Reserve is currently the largest investor on planet Earth with 22,913 different securities. However, corporate bonds still account for only $5 billion of the total amount. The Fed's balance sheet is still largely based on Treasury securities and mortgage-backed securities. 
The question is, what part of the current prices of large cap assets, such as Tesla or Apple, are only part of their purchase by the Fed? The Fed's strategy is simple. Keep the dollar alive. He can print as many dollars as he wants, since the US dollar is a global currency that always has liquidity. And now, with the COVID-19 pandemic and the current social instability in the United States, few are checking where these dollars are going. Money rarely reaches the pockets of citizens or small businesses. Most of the newly printed fiat money is sent directly to stocks, bonds, precious metals and, possibly, cryptocurrency. This money printing strategy has been used for decades, but it accelerated after the great financial crisis of 2008. One of the direct consequences of this influx of money is that stock markets are showing record yields compared to 10-year treasury bonds. The Fed's press and procurement policies raise ethical concerns. The Federal Reserve System can print as much money as it wants, and also buy any securities without question. This gives him an unprecedented opportunity to use the pump dump scheme, or pump and dump, pump and dump, on any assets at will. Such an unrestrained dollar issue pushes people to cryptocurrency as an asset without borders, beyond state control, and even as an instrument of the last investment hope. And this, on the one hand, strengthens the arguments in favor of Bitcoin as people's money, but how much of it is already on the balance sheets of the central banks of the world? Is Tether the Fed's money printing Trojan horse inside the cryptocurrency industry? Investors should keep an eye on the constant changes in the Federal Reserve's policy on inflation. Perhaps part of the recent bull market is simply a consequence of having more dollars, rather than a healthy upward trend in digital asset prices. After losing the $0.083 mark on January 5, the alt steadily declined. After that, the bears tested the $0.7292 mark several times before the January 21st sale. XRP fell by 32.6% since January 12, reaching a six-month low on January 22. However, with its 67.4% recovery since then, XRP has turned the Emma tapes bullish, testing the $0.9 Nine mark, immediate resistance. From that moment on, the nearest support was at $0.83, which coincided with the 20-day Emma. At the time of publication, the live XRP price today is $0.00. 88 United States dollars with a 24-hour trading volume of States dollars. We update our XRP to USD price in real time. XRP is down 0.4% in the last 24 hours. Do you think XRP will be able to win the court and restore its former price? Write the answers in the comments. That's it for today. Thank you for watching this video to the end. If you liked it, then don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel.